officially fall in Florida and I live in central Florida so that means that instead of it being 87 you know when I wake up at 6 in the morning it is 71 and so what does that mean to me it means that I will now be wearing exclusively long sleeve shirts Disney to be in fact um, and short shorts because I will bring fall into my life in any way possible. It's really weird because I, I hate the cold. Like, I love snowboarding and stuff like that, but if you tell me, like, Sydney, you have to live in the winter for at least five months, I would be like, no, I don't want that. I just love fall, I love fall aesthetics. I'm a quintessential white girl when it comes to this. And I got my obligatory pumpkin coffee drink and this one uh tiktok tiktok told me about this one and i've been obsessed with it ever since it is the ice chai latte with pumpkin cold foam on top and let me tell you chef kiss because it is so fall like literally if you like picture fall in your mind and you're like i wonder what that tastes like it's this drink it is this drink and uh you nobody can argue with me like nobody can argue with me so yeah so, um, what this video is going to be about, I think it's pretty much a short little video talking about what I plan to read in October. Um, I did buy a couple new books, so did not stick to the book buying ban, but uh, those are back at the apartment, so you'll see those soon. But the book that I'm currently reading, it's in the back of my car, you'd think I'd be more prepared, um, is goddess in the machine it's pretty good so far i definitely think it's like a slow start when it comes to like plot points and stuff like that there's a lot of ways that it could be like taking you of like oh are you gonna be following this are you gonna be following this storyline like where's it going kind of thing and i did get to a really big twist i'm about to start part three and so far pretty good i think as of right now it's probably just like a three star rating which is not bad it's pretty good honestly when you look at things but it's just not something that's like truly been like Whoo, that that's a good thing you know kind of thing so uh yeah that's the book that i'm currently reading and yeah so i will see you again real soon uh with the rest of my books so bye so hi welcome uh i mean i guess immediately back but here we are back in my apartment Coffee's over there, chilling. Um, let's hope my cat, who is behind you, does not knock over this whole situation that you guys are standing on. But let's get into what I hope that I read for October. Now, I did read a little bit more. I didn't read as much as I would have liked to read, but um, for like August and September. But again, let's just keep up the momentum. So, the first book and which is what I bought at Barnes and Noble's. Uh, Ease, and then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Quintessential horror author. Um, yeah, and then this is the one that like I hear a lot about that, and then obviously like uh, Midnight on the Orient Express. They are one of the big ones that I know that she wrote. And I also heard it was a drunk history where it was like she, um, like disappeared like left her husband but it turned it was like almost like she wrote her own like novel and like starred in it because then like someone found her and was like you're Agatha Christie and she's like no I'm not no I'm not and then it was just like this whole big thing um but yeah I guess because I want it definitely be spooky vibes for October I was like oh, I want to I want to read her I want to I want to see what she's all about so Agatha Christie, and then there were none. And it was originally called Ten Little Indians, but I'm really glad that they changed it to this title. So, <laughs> that's book number one. Now, book number two, um, I got 
the last video that I did. Um, and that's the Library of the Art Written um, by A.J. Hackwith. Again, this book is about a librarian who governs the unwritten wing, which is like all the books in hell that are unwritten or not unwritten. They're not finished being written. And so I guess it's like they're like curse in a sense. And I think that they get like a demon gets out. So I'm excited about this one. Again, a little spoopy vibes, heaven and hell kind of thing. And I know that again, last time I said that a lot of people like rant and rave about this book. So I'm excited to read it. Stop it, you das. The third book that I'm interested in is a nonfiction, which I don't remember the last time that I read a nonfiction book um, on my own accord. And what that is, well, actually, no, I know. It was last year for, or no, maybe earlier this year. I don't remember exactly when, but it was for Olivia Reads a Latte. She did The uh, Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule, Ted Bundy kind of vibe. Um, but this one, it's by the author of Brain on Fire, which is that, um, really interesting story where the girl just, like, all of a sudden, like, her, like, she, her brain, like, stops working properly and she just, like, feels like she's, like, super sick and blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's called The Great Pretender and what I like about it is it's about, like, 1970s, oh, hi, hi, um, Stanford psychologists and they went into undercover into asylums and then like to see like how similar or un dissimilar diagnoses were and they were like considered sane individuals you know when they went into it and then they came out with like all of these different diagnoses and um just different like like horror stories and essentially like their findings because it was like you know scientific you know exploration into like asylums their findings went on to like shut down a bunch of other different asylums and the ones they were at because of like malpractice and things like that however um this book goes into showing that despite what they did you know stuff still maybe bad in certain areas or the research that they originally put out maybe that was a little bit warped for their own personal gain just to write an article and so maybe like some of those places weren't actually as bad as they went on to say so it's a thick book I mean it's a paperback and let me see I think it's like I mean it's a research book but let me see I mean it's like 300 pages but I mean like that's I'm excited it's called The Great Pretender by Susanna Callahan and I'm really excited to read this now um, my camera's flashing at me, so I'm going to go quickly through these next two. Um, one of them I already mentioned in my previous video, so I won't really talk about that one as much. And that one is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rakowski. And it's a little sapphic moment, so I'm excited about that representation. And it's like fantasy, I believe, and you know good girl, go bad kind of thing. So I'm excited. And I know, I know a lot of booktubers really enjoy this book and I'm excited to also join them. So again, The Midnight Lie, really excited. And the last book, I'm really happy to finally own. Um, I've been following this author on Twitter um, for probably about a year now and I'm just so, 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 so happy for him because He's getting the recognition that he deserves. And I, again, have been following him for so long and I just see like his like growth and like, especially now he's like, I have imposter syndrome. Like this is just a too real for me. But the book that I'm excited to read is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Um, uh, this is the Barnes and Noble edition. And what that means is like one, it's this nice pretty um, art cover on the front that everyone sees, but then on the, under the dust jacket, Look at this bad boy. This is a book that honestly, like, I wouldn't even need, like, I, cute, very nice, but oh my god, sexy. I love it. It's, oh, I love this, like, burgundy with this gold. Uh, so pretty. Um, but again, I think it works perfectly. <laughs> 
for October because of the spooky vibes and um, you know it's about witches and ghosts and the gods of death and things like that and then the main character is a trans man and I'm just so excited to see how everything turns out. I know it's a little bit of a love story too and I've seen nothing but wonderful things and people just ranting and raving about this and the representation in it. I'm just, oh, I'm just so excited and again I'm just so proud of Aiden and everything that he's done. <laughs>